A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, on Friday, we like to check in with Bill Muhlenberg from Culture Watch. So much going on in the world today relating to culture. And Bill, what's happening in the US in the election campaign? Yes, thanks, Andrew. Plenty, as always, uh, certainly as we have this countdown now to the November 5 elections. Uh, after uh, quite a while of speculation as to who Kamala Harris, remember her, the unelected uh, nominee for president for the Democrats, uh, she's finally uh, picked her running mate, vice presidential candidate, uh, a governor from uh, one of the swing states. And uh, as I write in a recent piece, one of the more far left uh, Democrats as well. A good match for Kamala, but maybe not a great match for America or even, you know, some of the more moderate Democrats who are hoping that things might get toned down just a little bit. Yeah. So just for our listeners, what state is this governor from? Yeah, well, this is Minnesota, uh, uh, Midwest, Great Lakes, if you know your American geography. Uh, two-term Democrat governor there, Uh, that along with a few other places, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, have been the real key battleground states, probably six all up. If you can get uh, most of those six, you'll probably win in November. So in a sense, you could say it was a tactical move by Kamala, shore up support in Minnesota. However, as I mentioned, Uh, There were other options, more moderate options. Pennsylvania, I just said, uh, we had a Jewish governor, actually, Shapiro. Shapiro, yeah, I like the sound of him, to be honest. I was hoping he might get in. Well, yeah, look, um, you know, he had been at least, you know, he's trying to change, everybody's changing to fit the narrative, but he had been pro-Israel, he had been pro-school vultures, school choice, stuff like that. But we know that, look, the guys running the show here, Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and a few of the other heavyweight Dems, well, they decided to lay all their cards on the table instead of pretending to be moderate, you know, which a pick like Shapiro would have done, at least somewhat. They went with another hardcore lefty. So here you got Kamala, probably the most far left senator America's ever had. And now we got probably the most far left governor uh, America's ever had with Walsh, Tim Walsh. So, you know, they're really nailing their colors to the mass, saying we are going to be the most radical there is. That'll make a lot of Dems happy, not all Dems. And presumably it's not going to make all Americans happy. Uh, it's still kind of a neck and neck race in the polling. Uh, she's got a honeymoon high at the moment. The Democrat convention comes up in a week or so in Chicago. That'll give her a, more of a boost. But then the last few months, we'll see how things really pan out. And if this was much of a good choice or if it was a bad choice on her part. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of sad, but the modern left tend to look at diversity not in the, the, the context of ideas and thought and opinion and, and policy, but more on skin color. So obviously, uh, Tim Walsh is white, Kamala is dark skin, so they probably think that's their diversity ticket. That's all people care about these days. All they care about is skin color as opposed to substance. Yep. Skin color and often sexuality, right, of all different sizes and shapes. Uh, you know, I was thinking again today, if they're happy to have her and they're saying she might be the first, you know, non-white female president, well, in a sense, so what? You know, you might have the first, uh, what, albino dolphin president or the first bow-legged cactus plant. I mean, how about the first qualified and, uh, you know, talented and suitable president? Why does it always, again, it's this quota system. You got to have so many DEI requirements. You got to get these people in just to fill quotas instead of having somebody who's really up for the job and who's going to do best for America. So, yeah, it's uh, some people will buy that, uh, you know, foolishness. And, you know, I got to go with Kamala because, you know. Even though she, well, she's proven the last three and a half years with Biden that she's good at destroying the country, not very good at building up the country, certainly destroying the economy, destroying the borders, letting in millions of illegal immigrants, you name it, all the radical agenda items, pro-abortion, up to the hilt, uh, same with Walsh. 
uh, it's not looking good. So people think just having a woman of color in the top job is somehow going to be a neat thing. Well, if there's no more America in four years' time, I'm not sure how neat that's going to be. Yeah, well, I see the Guardian newspaper, which is a very left-wing publication as well. The uh, the article in there says this, Tim Waltz, charismatic running mate to help Harris make case against Trump. Uh, and the, um, you know, people seem enthused about it. So um, wh- how do you take that comment? Charismatic <laughs> running mate to help <laughs> Harris. Yeah, is he charismatic and is, uh, well, is he really creating a lot of enthusiasm in the Democrat yeah. Party, do you think? Well, I mean, almost like as charismatic as Biden was, right? You know, uh, keeping him awake at a meeting was a good start. And he doesn't seem a whole lot different. Uh, He's a bit younger. That's a plus. Although I did add, right? I added his 60 and her 59 years. That still comes out as three more years as a ticket than, uh, right, Trump and Vance. So if you're looking at age as an issue, well, go with the Republicans. They got three years on you. But yeah, he's, uh, again, it's his policies like uh, Kamala. It's what he said. It's what he's done. That's got to be our test, not how they look, what color, you know, charisma, whatever that means. So on this, again, we, we have the record, the historical record, the Dems and the media are trying their best to rewrite history, paint both of these characters as, oh, they're really just moderate. They're really just, you know, they're like middle of the road Americans, just like you and me. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, uh, Walsh uh, sat through those riots in the summer of 2020, uh, didn't want the National Guard in to quell the arson. The city was burning Minneapolis. So he didn't want, uh, well, he wanted to defund the police. He was promoting Black Lives Matter. He was saying all these riots are going on because we don't have enough diversity and inclusion. Uh, you know, so he defended this madness to the hilt. Billions of dollars of uh, businesses out of, well, people lost their lives and livelihoods. And he he was supporting fully these guys, the BOM rioters. And then, of course, Kamala was doing her best to bail them out in her term, uh, both in California and then as vice president. So, uh, you know, on that front alone, uh, if you want to see cities burning down in America, kind of like what we now have in parts of England, right? Uh, you know, just get these two guys in. Uh, they'll keep defunding the police. They'll keep telling us we need more diversity. And yeah, we'll see how long America lasts with that kind of agenda. But do you think middle America, the average American, will vote for a crazy Californian woman who's never really had a family, never had kids? Uh, allegedly, according to Ben Shapiro, she slept away into her first real role in yep. U.S. politics. And then you got this extreme left-wing governor who is uh, also not mainstream. Do you think middle America will buy it and actually vote the, this pair in? Yeah, well, we certainly hope not, which, again, is why we praise uh, Vision Christian Radio, you know, some of the alternative media, Sky News to a good extent, Fox News to a good extent, because none of the others, right, are running with this. They're all singing from the same same song sheet, sheet, right? Uh, You know, Kamala, oh, mild, you know, middle-of-the-road woman. Uh, Tim, oh, yeah, mild, middle-of-the-road guy. So they're going to lie their face off to uh, get these two in. But if Americans who, well, even if they're not getting the truth from the media, they're getting it from the the gas pump, right? They're getting it in the shopping when they're paying for their groceries. They know the cost of living, like Australia, is going off the roof. Uh, You know, they knew what gas cost back under Trump. They know what it costs now. They knew what a bag of groceries cost back then, what it costs now. So, you know, even if they are getting all the spin from the secular left media, you know, if they're halfway awake, they look at their own lives and then all we got to do is ask, you know, are you better off now than you were four years ago, right? That should do it. So hoping common sense, the pocketbook, you know, the millions of illegals flooding through the border, uh, you know. Walsh is he loves communist China. He's been there over thirty times. He thinks thirty, great 30 times. Three over, zero. Over thirty times. Who does that? Uh, well, well, he does. In fact, the amazing thing, right? We all recall Tiananmen Square massacre, right? He got married on that very day. And where did they do their honeymoon? 
They went to China to celebrate. Wow. Great American, great American politician. He thinks China is the queen's bee's knees and uh, he even boasted once when he was at China. Oh, they gave me so many gifts. They gave me so many things. Well, yeah, that's called buying your vote, Tim. Uh, that's what they do. They're buying it all. Well, buying up property, whatever. They're taking over the world in their own way. And Tim is fully with this. So, yeah, hopefully the average American will see right through this whole madness. Well, just for our listeners, this is off your website, which is such a good read. It's the BillMuhlenberg.com or search up Culture Watch. These are some of the policies or the decisions that uh, this individual has made. He supports illegal immigration, not legal. He supports sanctuary states and sanctuary cities for illegal migrants. He gave illegal aliens driver's licenses, free health care access, free tuition. He said that if Trump builds 25-foot walls on the southern border, he would produce 30-foot ladders to help illegals enter America. He fully supports the radical and woke sexual agendas. He pushed sex sex change operations for children, regardless of their parents uh, having any consent. He forced schools to have tampons in boys' fourth-grade bathrooms in primary school. He, of course, loves communist China, as you said. He's been to China 30 times. He married on the eve of the Tiananmen Square massacre and then honeymooned there. He's a self-professed socialist. He says socialism means um, being neighborly, and he is fully pro-BLM, and the list goes on and on and on. So, Bill, my question is, how did this guy get elected twice in the state of Minnesota? (laughs) Well, mind you, it's been a lefty, trendy state for quite a while now. And, well, well, you have to keep asking, you know, how do these guys get in? How can some Americans be so clueless, it seems, as to what they're on about? But, again, we've had, well, the the bigger picture answers. We've had, what, 40, 50 years now of really not education but indoctrination, proselytization uh, in our school systems, right? They've been pushing radical left agendas in schools for decades and decades. So if that's all you know – Right, that's all you're getting. Well, you you know. Yeah, I think Bill, there's such a contrast between the conservatives in America right now and the Democrat Party that it's a great time for Christians to pray and ask God for His will to be done in this U.S. election because it will affect the rest of the world, won't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it always does. America has this impact for good or ill. So yeah, now is a time to pray, perhaps more than ever before. If this pair gets in, you really worry if there's going to be much of a future left for America. So, yeah, we better get on our knees. Americans better prayerfully and carefully vote and vote wisely. And, uh, yeah, we got to seek God more than ever at this time. Bill, a really enlightening conversation today. Thank you so much for joining us on 2020. And just to remind our listeners, you can find Bill on his Culture Watch website or Bill Muhlenberg, that's M-U-E-H-L-E-N-B-E-R-G dot com. He's got great articles and blogs on there every day. And you'll learn a lot of interesting things about America, Australia and culture across the Western world. Bill, I want to thank you for joining us on 2020 today. Thanks again, Andrew. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.